Welcome to Walking the Way, folks. Today is the 25th of May, 2020. My name is Ray. Thank you for joining us. And if you're listening in for the very first time, let me say thank you and welcome as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. It's a very simple format. It follows a very simple pattern. It's a mixture of prayer, scripture, and music. Before we start, though, don't forget, if you'd like to follow along with the script in your hand, there is a download the script button in the show notes. Hit that download the script button. You'll be able to have a, you'll get a copy of the PDF basically of today's episode. It's not always exactly the same. I have been known to deviate, but certainly it's worth having. If you'd like to support Walking the Way, then again uh, there is a link to our giving page in the show notes. And finally, if you'd like more information about me or the podcast, head to www.rayborrett.co.uk. And again, the link is in the show notes. We always start each episode of Walking the Way with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? And our prayer today is based on Psalm 31. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are a righteous God, so I pray, save me. Hear me, save me now. Be my refuge to protect me, my defense to save me. You are my refuge and defense. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Keep me safe from the trap that has been set for me. Shelter me from danger. I place myself in your care, Lord. You will save me. You are a faithful God. You hate those who worship false gods, but I trust in you. I will be glad and rejoice because of your constant love. You see my suffering. You know my trouble. But my trust is in you, O Lord, for you are my God. I am always in your care. Save me from my enemies, from those who would persecute me. Look on your servant with kindness. Save me in your constant love. I call to you, Lord. Don't let me be disgraced. May the wicked be disgraced. May they go silently down to the world of the dead. Silence those liars, all the proud and arrogant, who speak with contempt about the righteous. How wonderful are the good things you keep for those who honor you. Everyone knows how good you are, how securely you protect those who trust you. You hide them in the safety of your presence from the plots of others. In a safe shelter you hide them from the insults of their enemies. Praise the Lord. How wonderfully he showed his love for me when I was surrounded and attacked. I was afraid and thought that he'd driven me out of his presence, but he heard my cry when I called him for help. Love the Lord, all you faithful people. Amen. Isaiah 8 verse 19 And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who must whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? This guy came up to me at a funeral once and he said, Would you mind if I said a few words to you? And it's a question I usually get asked. I get asked regularly when I'm organizing an event of some kind. Usually it's a, a funeral, but it's happened at baptisms. It's happened at weddings. This time it happened to be a funeral. It was the funeral of a young man who'd unfortunately dropped dead very suddenly. And the person who'd asked the question was a spiritualist. And had this funeral been in some sort of civic place like a crematorium, I would have most likely have said yes, but as this was one of the churches that I passed, I politely declined the offer. It turns out that the young man was a member of that church, but his family had wanted him to have a good Christian service. After the funeral, I got reflecting on why people feel the need to turn to the occult. I've always had a very biblical view of mediums and spiritualists. I'm not suggesting for a second that we go all King Saul on mediums and spiritualists. Okay, you only need to read the account of the woman in Endor um, to understand where, where that goes. But I don't think that we as people should have anything to do with them. It was a definite, you know, the Bible tells us it's a definite no-no. And in the end, it was actually one of the reasons why the people of Israel were sent into exile was the fact that they continued to consult mediums and witches and wizards. But why? You know, it's a question people ask all the time. Surely it can't hurt, and surely a little, it's a little bit of fun. 
but I personally see two issues when we think about the occult. Firstly, and Isaiah asks the question, why not ask God? If we are looking for answers, then surely the best place to go is God. God will give us an answer, even if that answer is no. The second reason is a bit more sinister, and it depends on your view of angels and demons. I always thought, when someone consults a medium, how can you guarantee that the person who comes to the fore is who they say they are? Because Scripture describes Satan as an angel of light, deceiving even the elect. Satan is the deceiver whose whole aim in life is to kill, to maim, and destroy. That's what Jesus tells us. It makes sense to stay well away from him. Don't do it, folks. Don't. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we read more about the Council of Jerusalem. We'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Father, we've talked about deception and we've talked about trust. Lord, this morning, show us through your word that we can trust in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the New King James Version, and today we're reading Acts 15. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, Unless you were circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that God had done with them. 
But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. When there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he had to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent, and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a prophet for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this I will return, and we rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we should write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled and from blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Then it pleased the apostles and elders, with the whole church, to send chosen men from their own company to Antioch, with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your souls, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment, it seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were sent off, they came to Antioch. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. When they read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas, themselves being prophet also, exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. And after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Then after some days Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take with him the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them in the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another, and Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. We're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us a little bit of space to think about what bits of scripture may have caught our attention. And then after the music, we're going to pray for a couple of people, and we're going to say our prayer for today.
before we pray, just a reminder that if you would like us to pray for you, then drop us a line through the usual channels. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email, our voicemail service. All the links are in the show notes. Click the link. We would love to be able to pray with you. We would love to be able to support you through whatever you're going through. It might be a prayer of praise. It might be willing to say thank you for God for something. It may be like the two people we're going to be praying for now that they're battling for their lives. We would love to pray with you and support you through these times. Today we're going to be praying for Joanne. We prayed for Joanne on Friday, but I would appreciate if we could pray for her again. And we're going to pray for David. And David had re received some really, really bad news last week. He was given a diagnosis of bowel cancer. So let's offer up our prayers for Joanne and for David. Father, we come again into your presence thinking about those who are battling, those who are fighting the fight for their health, for their lives. We're reminded, Lord, that you are the God that said you would heal. Father, Scripture tells us that by, our, by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. So, Father, we pray for Joanne. We ask, Lord, that as she lies in intensive care, that you would continue to work your miracle through her, that you will continue to heal her. We pray also for David, Lord, who's received his diagnosis of bowel cancer. Father, we come against that in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you would perform a miracle in both these people's lives, that they will be completely healed. Father, we ask you to be with their families. We think of Christian, David's son. We think of Richard and Dorothy, Joanne's mum and dad. Lord, that you would be with them. You would give them peace and comfort and just the knowledge that you are with them and a knowledge of your presence. Father, we ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Our prayer for today. From the beginning, Lord, you knew the final outcome. You watched as the jigsaw pieces were slotted into place. You saw the significance of every moment. Jesus, as your body was anointed with oil at the table of Simon the leper, the picture was becoming clearer, not only in your eyes, but also to an unknown woman and one of your closest friends. Judas sensed that this was his moment, sacrificing trust that had been so freely given on the altar of selfish gain for his fifteen minutes of fame and thirty pieces of silver. Jesus, the woman, recognized the moment. She gave generously, unselfishly, a costly gift freely offered a fragrant sacrifice of perfume and love, remembered forever in your heart. And as Judas slipped away unnoticed, your disciples saw none of this. They failed to see the significance of the moment. Two sacrifices, one of trust and one of love. But you noticed, Lord, as you noticed every day, our sacrificial offering and our betrayal. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the press. If you want to partner with Walking the Way, if you'd like to donate towards the project, that would be amazing. We are looking at upgrading all our equipment, so any donations would be fantastic. Please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information, head to rayborrett.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Don't forget, you can also listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray, and so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.